Well, the bastard is out. So, what I ended up doing was this is the side that came out. As you can see it's all kind of chewed up. And you notice there's no uh, bushing with it. So, the problem is this part was moving on the bushings. The bushings weren't moving on the pole, which I'm assuming has how it's supposed to work. The bushings should go around that pole and slide. These weren't. That's why it didn't want to come off. And then it got held up on that little lip. So I ended up taking this and this, and I ground that lip off of that bushing. Once I did, I put some WD-40 in there, and boom, this thing slid off. So now I got to work on trying to get this clevis off, but now you can see why I had to cut this. I mean, this is just, I mean, completely rusted and fused together. So I looked at ordering a new clevis, which was like $40, and then a new one of these, one of the new bolts. Uh, I'm going to the Porsche dealer tomorrow to pick up a couple of new bushings and a new brake switch. I didn't get the new clevis because it was like 40 bucks. This part would have taken at least a month to come in. It had to come from Germany. So I've got this one. And actually, I had Elliot send me another brake pedal because I wasn't sure how bad I was going to chew this up and the damage that I was going to do to this. And I need I want to get this fixed this weekend. So there's another clevis and everything on that. But I got to try to get this out. And that way, I'll just put it in the the... Uh, rust stuff get rid of all the rust and then hopefully be able to just clean that up and, and use that um, and that'll be fine but I mean this is pretty torn up right here um, and the bushings are still on the pole inside so I've got to get those off but they're fused they're rusted to the pole and then I got to get the pole cleaned up so I'll show you guys that as well once I get back under there. But that's it for tonight. I'm surprised I was able to get that off. But yep, that's what the solution I came up with. All right. It is out. See how rusty it is. So this is going to go in a new Evapo rust. Um, you know, and then we'll lube all that up. But what I ended up doing was I found that little socket. And I got it on here, and I was able to uh, put it in the vise and just pound it out. So we'll put this all in the Evapo rust. Hopefully that'll be enough that I can get this bolt and this out of there. Um, but at the very least, we'll get this cleaned up. Um, and we will, uh, we will go from there. All right, so I got the brake pedal cleaned up a little bit. Um, put a little of this rust converter on and then I'll go ahead and this is the only matte black that I have or the black that I have which is fine <laughs> it'll survive whatever temperature so that's this came out really nice so that looks pretty new and nice and painted so that's back on um, since I'm in there and I had to take it off we're going to replace the uh the spring anyway so um yep we just wait for that to dry overnight and i'll paint that tomorrow uh and then um this weekend we'll hopefully get this back in and have power brakes and the brake lights will brake pedal will come all the way back and we'll be good to go all right so I ended up going to the Porsche dealer to pick up a couple of parts and everything. Um, got that out, but I can't get the this part out of there, so I have soaked that in PB plaster. Here is the spare one that I got from Elliot. Um, I was able to get the clevis off of this one. That's soaking there now. So... We'll have to see if I can get that out. If not, I'll have to use that one. But I had a hard time getting... Where is that part? 
this part out of the spare one. So this cleaned up pretty nice. Doesn't rotate real smooth, so I got some WD-40 on there rotating and, and working right now. But it was actually cheaper. Porsche dealership's not that far from me, but it saved me probably $15 uh, in shipping costs. And they were able to get most of the stuff here. They were able to get it all in two days. So instead of waiting for shipping and everything, just order it from the dealership. You know, most of the time, uh, the new parts, that's the same price at the dealer as it is online. So, um, yeah, that's what I ended up doing. So we're going to let that smoke soak in PB Blaster. I have painted my brake pedal. So it's kind of like a matte black instead of a, a finished look. But that's what that uh, paint was. But that's fine. Um, so it looks pretty good. And then we'll start working on getting all this stuff back in the car. All right. And you can see it's smoking. We applied a little heat to it. And it's turning. And that should come out now. So... Just even with the needle nose pliers, it will turn and get that out. So, put a little PB blaster in there and uh, started here and boil and pop. So I figured it probably got a got it out of there. So we are good to go. Um. Hopefully that other piece loosens up, but that'll work. So, yep, I just put my second coat on that. And that looks pretty good. I think what we'll do is we'll work on getting the new bushings in that. And hopefully this will have loosened up a little bit so that can spin, because that's supposed to turn on that. So we'll have to wait and see. But, yep, a little bit of heat. That's all it took. All right, here we are. All cleaned up. See how nice and easy that comes out? That's how it's supposed to work. So that goes and slides in there. And then this comes and clips like that so it can't come out. This is all nice and painted. All the rust is gone. Brake boosters put together. So I've got to get in here. We've got to get the pole cleaned off, get those bushings off, and then we can start putting it back together. So that's what we're going to do now. All right. Brake booster is in. So we can uh, go ahead and work on getting the bushings in the pedal, getting the clevis on the other end, getting that all tightened up inside. And then get the master cylinder back on. Also, the pole that everything goes on is clean. Uh, so I actually I took the Dremel and just cut the bushing down long ways and just popped it. It slid off then because then it loosened up, and there was rust all over it. So then I took uh, what did I do? I took some of here. Took some of this. And then some sandpaper and sanded the whole thing down, smoothed it out, cleaned it off. So that's all ready to go now. So we just have to get the bushings in the pedal, the clevis back on, and I got to get that spring out of there too and replace it with the new one because it's still attached in the back. So I'll do that as well. Well, you'll notice, you'll notice the booster is out. I can't get the brake pedal on. It won't slide on. I got the first bushing in, but now it won't go any further. And now I can't get the second bushing on. So that was starting to get in the way. So I had to take it back out. So hopefully now I'll be able to get the clamp in there and I'll be able to squeeze it and get it on. But this brake pedal is just going to be the absolute death of me. 
but we will get it done. All right, well, the brake pedal is finally in. So I have spent three hours just trying to get that brake pedal back in. Ridiculous. So now I can go ahead and get the rest of the stuff put back on, the brake booster and all that. Oh, I got the return spring on too. Um, so just a little pro tip. If you are going to do your return spring, get the part, the side that's furthest this way on first. Then take a long needle nose plier, grab that hook, get up there and you can bend it and get it clicked into the hole on the pedal. That took me 30 seconds to do it that way. I tried to do it with the screwdriver and then I decided to try this. So 30 seconds and it was done. So that was by far the easiest job and that's the one I was dreading the most. So uh, we'll just start putting everything back together. Brake booster is in for the second time. Everything's hooked up underneath. I still need to do the brake light switch, but I'm going to wait to do that till I get everything in and done. Um, everything's measured out correctly. So, that is where the push rod goes to the mount uh, to the center of the locking pin on the on the brake pedal seven and a quarter inches so I measured that out um, so that push rod should be in the correct position so we'll just work on getting uh, the master cylinder back in and then we can jack up the car and start bleeding the brakes and bleeding the clutch all right everything is back in and uh, the Uh, reservoir is full uh, my power bleeder is up there I'll have to get that down but I think I am done for the day I have spent about six hours out here just trying to get this finished and done so I think tomorrow will be bleeding day um, I'll have to get that starter out too so I can bleed that uh, slave cylinder down there but uh, yeah I just filled everything up and hopefully uh, Oh, I still got to hook up the vacuum line, do that, but then hopefully we should be good. All right, everything is bled and back together. Uh, one of the things I noticed, the power bleeder, when I got it up to closer to 20 rather than 15, it started squirting out of the, the grommet. So I had to keep it at 15, but I got everything bled. Clutch was a little soft first couple of times, but it seems to have been better. Turned the car on, pushed the clutch in, I was able to put it into gear. So um, the only way is going to be to drive it. Uh, kind of same thing with the brakes. I didn't really feel a whole lot of difference in the brakes and the power bleeding, but the brake pedal is returning all the way back. So that's good, at least. Um, but we'll have to just get it out on the road. I got to get the seat back in. But I think we are, uh, I think we're good and we'll have to take it out for a test drive. All right, well, first the good. I've got power brakes, it feels like, because it's definitely easier. Bad, pedal's still not returning. It's still not coming all the way back. It's releasing the brakes a little bit more, but it's still holding on to them just a little bit. It's that last little bit that just does not want to come back and it's like the the push against the switch it's just not strong enough to pull back so I don't know I, I, I don't know what the next thing to do is going to be but I mean something's got to be figured out maybe I try to put the see if there's a different hole for the return spring that it'll be strong enough to try to pull it back but I don't I don't know I don't know why it's not returning. All right, so I drove the car a little more yesterday and the brake lights went off and the brakes released 
the pedal came back up. So I don't know. We'll just, I guess, kind of keep driving and see what happens with it. I don't know what changed or what went different. But um, yeah, we're, uh, it seems to have worked itself out and the pedal is returning all the way now. So um, it's going to be harder to start on the hills because the little hills, when the bricks were grabbing, it wouldn't roll back on you. But now it does. Um, I got to be careful coming in the garage too, because without that grabbing a little bit, when you come in the garage, it's a little quicker now too as well. So, uh, but I do have one of my brake lights out now. So now I got to go look at the, the wiring. It's got to be the wiring in the back because um, it's the right one. Left one works, right one doesn't. So that piggybacks off that and moves over to this side is the way that works. So something's loose, something, something came out. But we'll get that fixed. That's not a big deal.